Hello and welcome. You're watching the news. I'm Gargi Rawat. Coming up ahead, fresh violence in Gurugram today after the clashes that took place in Nu and Haryana yesterday. In Parliament, the government has introduced a contentious Delhi Services Bill. Also, tough words for the government from the Supreme Court on violence. Let's take a look at the headlines we're tracking. A day after stone pelting and violence in Haryana's Nu during a religious procession. Fresh violence today in Gurugram, a mob attacked eateries and shops, setting them on fire. Five people have died, over 70 injured since yesterday. Did social media posts by cow vigilante Monu Manesar trigger the violence? The Supreme Court says there's been an absolute breakdown of constitutional machinery in Manipur. Summon the Director General of Police at the next hearing as the government gives data on FIRs filed and action taken over the last two months. The government introduced the contentious Delhi Services Bill in Parliament that gives the centre control of bureaucracy in Delhi. The opposition hit Saur Aap says it will be the murder of democracy. But in a setback for the Aap, the BJD will support the bill. Opposition parties upset after NCP leader Sharad Pawar today shared the stage and light moments with Prime Minister Narendra Modi at a function in Pune. His nephew Ajit Pawar also attended the function. And a witness against BJP MP Abrij Bhushan, Sharan Singh, former wrestler Anita Shoran, enters the race to fight for the president's post in the Wrestling Federation of India. The 2010 Commonwealth Gold Medalist is the lone woman in the 50 member voters and candidates list. Our top story now in the situation in Haryana. There was fresh violence today in Gurugram next to the national capital, Delhi. This a day after communal clashes broke out in the Mewat region when a religious procession came under attack. Today, restaurants and shops were vandalized and torched by a mob amid religious chants. Eyewitnesses said a mob of around 200 men had entered the area around 4 p.m. armed with sticks and stones and, uh, and took... and. Uh, attacked the shops and set them on fire and this despite section 144 being in place in Gurugram. Now in all five people have died, over 70 were injured in the violence that took place yesterday in Nu in the Mewat region. The chief minister has said there is a conspiracy behind the violence. But the question is what led to the violence in the first place? Saurabh Shukla and Priyanshi Sharma report. Arson, firing, vandalism and violence continued for almost 18 hours in Haryana's Nu and the Sona area of Gurugram, which is just 50 kilometers from Delhi. This after stone pelting at a VHP Yatra in Nu. From there, the violence spread to other parts. Shops were burnt and vehicles were torched at several places. Rioters rammed a bus into the cyber police station in Nu and burnt several vehicles parked there. The situation was brought under control after paramilitary forces arrived late at night. According to estimates, more than 100 vehicles were set on fire by the rioters. 44 FIRs have been registered so far and more than 70 people have been arrested. निश्चित रूप से एक बड़े षड्यंत्र का कहीं ना कहीं हिस्सा लगता है। सब जिलों में शांति स्थापित इस समय की गई है। छानबीन के बाद जो भी दोषी लोग होंगे, उनके खिलाफ सख्त कार्रवाई की जाएगी। किसी भी उपद्रवी को बख्शा नहीं जाएगा। Late on Monday night, a mosque was attacked and one person was killed there. We have already arrested five people following raids throughout the night. After relative calm in the morning, fresh violence was reported from Bakshapur in Gurugram, where meat shops and non-veg restaurants were burnt and attacked by mobs chanting religious slogans. The glass of this restaurant has been completely broken. You can see it's absolutely shocking. Uh, we'll show you how bad the situation is. Even here you can see that as this used to be a restaurant, there are some chairs there inside. My camera person Joseph is going to show you. There are chairs for customers and there's glass all over. That's all you can see because this shop was also vandalized by a mob of around 200 people. Extremely concerning situation that we are seeing, a tense situation that we are seeing here in Haryana's Gurugram. 
a small cooler that has also been damaged along with all the glass here. The boards have been damaged. Whatever glass there used to be, there's glass all over the floor as well. And everything has been vandalized in this small little restaurant in Gurugram's Badshapur. More and more such incidents now coming up of specific targeted attacks on shops by a mob of close to 100 to 200 people and in some cases even more. Even after the police had imposed Section 144 and assured that there are no fresh cases of violence, even then these cases of vandalism are being seen in Haryana's Gurugram. So the question is, what led to this large-scale violence? This man is Monu Manesar, who released a video on July 30, declaring that he will attend the Yatra in Nu and urged people to come. Monu is wanted in the murder of two young men from Rajasthan's Bharatpur, Junaid and Nasir, and has been on the run since February. Junaid and Nasir were beaten to death allegedly by Monu and his accomplices and burnt alive in their own car. Statements from Monu and other right-wing activists such as Bittu Bajrangi and rumours of Monu coming to the Yatra led to the unrest. But अखबारों में भी सब चीज आई थी कि हालात जो है तनावपूर्ण हो रहे हैं हम समझते हैं अगर सही वक्त पे सही कदम उठाए जाते प्रशासन तो इस तरीके की जो ये टकराव बना जो ये यहां नूह में आके एक अफवाह और छोड़ दी गई या क्या है किसी चीज के लिए कि मोनू मानसर यहां आ गया है उससे ये स्थिति जो है ये जो उत्पन्न हुई उसमें हमें बड़ा दुख है इस बात का कि हमारा इलाका कलंकित हुआ the administration has also admitted that the violence was triggered by Monu Manesar's statement and rumours of his arrival. No doubt that we are social media, but the police have also been prepared for it. And there was no hope that it could be so big as it could be. It was prepared for it. No doubt that there are some less than that. This is right across the high-rise buildings of Gurugram city. There's a high-rise building right opposite to where I'm standing. And right on the other side, you are seeing these shops that have been burnt uh, in the communal violence that has been going on uh, that started in Nu, but that has been spreading in Gurugram as well. The police officials told us that there's no major violence that has been reported today. They told us that majorly the violence got over yesterday when uh, a mosque was also torched, burnt last night. But we are clearly seeing that the violence is continuing even today in several parts of Gurugram as well. The irony is that neither Monu Manasa nor Bittu Bajrangi came to attend the procession, but rumours of their arrival has left five killed and 70 injured. With Saurabh Shukla, Sushil Rathi and Priyanshi Sharma, Bureau Report, NDTV. In other news now, the Supreme Court had scathing remarks for the government over the ethnic violence in Manipur, saying that there had been an absolute breakdown of constitutional machinery in the state for the past two months. Now, yesterday, uh, during the hearing, the centre and state government had been asked to answer six questions by the top court. Uh, today, Solicitor General Tushar Mehta told the court that 6,523 FIRs related to violence had been registered, of which 11 related to crimes against women and children. Terming the investigation tardy and lethargic, the court has now demanded the personal presence of the Manipur Director General of Police during the next hearing on Monday. Let's go across to Arvind for more. And Arvind, tell us more about what happened in the court today and how the DGP has been summoned. Gargi, Supreme Court has summoned Manipur DGP uh, to be physically present in court uh, during the next uh, hearing in connection with the Manipur violence matter which has been scheduled for Monday. So Manipur DGP has to be uh, personally present in court in order to appraise the court about the status of investigation. Today, uh, Solicitor General Tusha Mehta appearing for State of Manipur uh, submitted a, a status report uh, in Supreme Court which detailed, uh, uh, which gave facts that almost 6,523 FAS have been registered since uh, May 3rd in Manipur. That's when the violence began in the state of Manipur and he also said uh, out of the 6,000 1,523 odd FIRs, 11 FIRs pertain uh, uh, to uh, crimes against women and children and that's why Solicitor General uh, gave an uh, undertaking to Supreme Court that the government is ready to transfer all these 11 cases to Central Bureau of Investigation uh, for, for investigation into this particular case. But taking note of the fact that even after uh, a delay in registration of FIRs, there have been several instances of delay even in
in recording the statements of both victims and survivors in crime against in crimes against women and children and that's why uh, supreme court said that the investigation was so lethargic and also tardy and also supreme court also went to an extent of saying that there, uh, there was a complete uh, breakdown of constitutional machinery and also a breakdown of law and order in the state of manipur and that's why uh, supreme court said that there has to be a message a healing touch a message of confidence has to be sent to uh, state of manipur and that's why supreme court also hinted uh, that uh, a committee is likely to be constituted in order to look into this facts and also supreme court said that the facts that have been submitted by state of manipur is inadequate and that's why supreme court has said that they need more uh, break up of a number of cases that pertains to rape murder and also arson and also grievous uh, injuries uh, that break up the supreme court has sought from state of manipur and that's why manipur dgp has been asked to appear on monday at around 2 pm in supreme court and we can expect supreme court to constitute a committee com comprising of former uh, judges of high court uh, to look into matter to be a independent committee that will be looking into both the investigation and also the fact of rehabilitation and other compensation that has to be given to the victims right arvin so the supreme court really wants a detailed status report on how the cases have been handled thanks so much for joining us uh, with those details and now a special ground report uh, on the situation in manipur in the last 3 months at least 160 people have been killed 60000 have been displaced uh, this though is the story of those who left their homes never to return there are at least 30 complaints with the police of people missing in the conflict their families wait on endlessly ratadeep choudhury reports <laughs> Kavita's husband, 47-year-old Atom Samarendra Singh, a journalist and researcher, has been missing for three months. On May 6, he was last seen near Manipur's Olympic Park in the outskirts of Imphal Valley. His phone stopped functioning. His family have no clues on what happened. Oh, my dad worked very hard to send me to the ISRO. Uh, young scientist program and I held at Shillong. Now I cannot send I cannot send my son at Delhi for his further study. He is the only person who manages our family. So now how can I manage? There are at least thirty well documented cases of people missing in this conflict in Manipur. police sources say that in every missing complaint searches have been carried out but there is no success yet and with more than 6000 zero fir's filed in manipur in the past close to 3 months police sources say that the number of people missing in conflict might actually go up exactly 2 months after samarendra and his friend went missing another tragic story unfolded in imphal on july 6 17 years old Hijam Luangbi Ling Thui Gambi left her home for her neat coaching classes in the morning. Since curfew has been relaxed, she met her friend Hijam Hamanji and they went on a ride on his bike. They never returned. Their parents have filed complaints with the police at two separate police stations. The police says they have some CCTV footage of them on a bike. but that's it apo ye saber kan gigi mein na pira pari protocol ta da ta hai na aroi ba switch off gigi pun ta da ta hai na idan pin chali jin na second ama ama wali ngai da switch off to gibi gi report ne ada gidi hujiki na pa ma chali jin na lamdan ada wai da ta hai na ida ki bani it's not the people from the valley alone in the manipur hills several ngos have documented cases of missing people In some cases dead bodies have been identified but they are yet to be sent back a mass burial has been planned on August 3 There are around 44 unknown or missing bodies reported at the moment and we have requested to the uh, district administrators uh, for our dead bodies to come home for the families of the 30 people missing there is no certainty on how long their wait will be will they find their loved ones or will they always remain waiting
with BM Sanju and Impal in Guwahati, Ratnadeep Chaudhary for NDTV. Today, amid sloganeering and ruckus in the House, the government introduced the bill to replace the contentious Delhi Ordinance. Opposition parties called it an attack on the country's federal nature, with the Aadmi Party saying the bill will murder the democratic process in Delhi. But in a big setback for the opposition, the BJD has declared support for the bill. Even as the parliament remained deadlocked over Manipur, the government introduced a bill to replace the contentious Delhi Ordinance. Amit Shah tabled the Government of National Capital Territory of Delhi Amendment Bill in the Lok Sabha amidst opposition sloganeering. There was quick dissent to the bill led by the Congress. Number two, the bill infringes the principle of representative democracy which is a basic feature of the Constitution. The legislators are accountable to the electorate. The electorate must have a say in who governs them. If the Delhi government is not able to control and hold to account the officers the posted in its service, sir, yes. the fact is that it's, a, it's their responsibility the legislature cannot be fulfilled. The Amatmi Party claims the bill will murder the democratic process in Delhi. Delhi ka jo adhyadesh laya ja raha hai, mujhe nahi lagta ki isse zada gair log tantrik aur asamvidhanik बिल कभी भी भारत की संसद के भीतर लाया गया है ये दिल्ली में डेमोक्रेसी को बाबूक्रेसी में तब्दील कर देगा अब लोकतंत्र नहीं बचेगा अफसरशाही अफसरशाही बचेगी दिल्ली में द बिल गिव्स द सेंटर कंट्रोल ओवर अपॉइंटमेंट्स पोस्टिंग्स एंड ट्रांसफर्स ऑफ दिल्ली ब्यूरोक्रेट्स सम चेंजेस फ्रॉम द ऑर्डिनेंस ऑफर सम रिस्पाइट टू द दिल्ली गवर्नमेंट इन टर्म्स ऑफ लेजिस्लेशन a key portion that prevented the assembly from creating laws on state public services and state public service commission has been removed the powers granted to the lieutenant governor to appoint chiefs of all bodies boards and corporations has also been curbed he will now deal only with bodies set up through an act of parliament the delhi ordinance bill is all set to worsen the standoff between the opposition and the treasury benches in the parliament and remember, the Speaker has allotted three days for a discussion on the no-confidence motion from 8th to 10th of August. Prime Minister is likely to reply to the motion on 10th of August. And these three days from 8th to 10th is likely to witness the maximum fireworks that we have seen in the monsoon session so far. With Pooja Arya in New Delhi, Mega Prasad for NDTV. News now from Maharashtra and there's disquiet among opposition parties after Sharad Pawar shared the state with Prime Minister Narendra Modi for an event in Pune today. Both leaders were all smiles at the event. Also on stage was Sharad Pawar's nephew Ajit Pawar who the leader has met recently several times and this too has created confusion in his own party and the opposition. Ponami on display as NCP leader Sharad Pawar shared the stage with Prime Minister Narendra Modi after almost seven years. Also on stage was Ajit Pawar, who had rebelled against the senior Pawar and had become Maharashtra's deputy chief minister. The occasion was the prime minister being honoured with the Lokmanya Tilak National Award in Pune. <laughs> आज पुणे में आप सबके बीच मुझे जो सम्मान मिला है ये मेरे जीवन का एक अविस्मरणीय अनुभव है जो जगह जो संस्था सीधे तिलक जी से जुड़ी रही हो 
उसके द्वारा लोकमान्य तिलक नेशनल अवार्ड मिलना मेरे लिए सौभाग्य की बात है opposition leaders who only recently announced an alliance to fight the bjp are questioning the political position being taken by sharad pawar shiv sena udhav bala sahib thakre mp sanjay raut has attacked both pawar and the bjp sharad pawar sahab ka daava hai ki 3 mahine pehle maine khud pradhan mantri ko nyota diya tha is karyakram ka तो अगर मैं वहाँ हाजिर नहीं रहूँ तो ठीक नहीं दिखता प्रधानमंत्री जी का एक प्रोटोकॉल होता है लेकिन एक महीने पहले हमारे प्रधानमंत्री जी ने उनके भोपाल के सम्मेलन में सबसे बड़ा हमला किया था सत्तर हजार करोड़ ऐसी हजार करोड़ भ्रष्टाचार प्रधानमंत्री का भाषण होने के बाद दो दिन में सभी भ्रष्टाचार लोग उनके पार्टी में चले आए कहाँ गया भ्रष्टाचार के खिलाफ आपका नारा सर Ajit Pawar has met Sharad Pawar 3 times in the last month after rebelling against him. Sharad Pawar has not clarified on these meetings creating confusion in the minds of many NCP MLAs who don't plan to attend the monsoon session of the assembly. NCP chief Sharad Pawar is playing an important role for opposition unity and the next meeting of these parties are going to be in Mumbai. While leaders of several opposition parties requested Sharad Pawar not to share dais with Prime Minister Narendra Modi, Sharad Pawar and Narendra Modi can be seen together, and these pictures are something that the leaders of the opposition parties won't like. In Pune, with camera person Sanjay Mandal, Sohit Mishra, NDTV. Moving away from politics, now in heavy rainfall in July while causing flooding in the national capital also gave Delhi its best air quality for the month in five years while the average maximum temperature also dropped to its lowest levels since 2016. Parmeshwar reports. Now while pollution in Delhi NCR is a year-round problem that needs strategies that target emission reduction from both local and regional polluting sources, we have some pleasantly surprising news. This July, Delhi has recorded the cleanest air for the month since 2019, according to the Commission for Air Quality Management. Rain in July gave Delhi its best air quality for the month in five years, while the average maximum temperature also dropped to its lowest level since the year 2016, as per official data. The data from the Indian Met Department and the Central Pollution Control Board also shows that Delhi's average air quality index this year so far is the lowest for the corresponding period since 2019, except for 2020, the year of the COVID-19 lockdown. In fact, the Central Pollution Control Board data shows that average AQI for July this year was better than the average for 2017 and 2018 as well. The better air quality this year comes with 19 days of rainfall that Delhi saw this July. While the same number of 19 rainy days was recorded in July last year, this year, the month saw more rain recording a total of 384.6 mm at the Saptarjang weather station, which serves as a marker for the city. This is an excess of 83% over the normal of 209.7 mm for the month. Now, this is also the second highest amount of rainfall that the city has seen in July in at least 14 years since the year 2009. The highest amount seen during this period was in July 2021, when Delhi recorded 507.1 mm of rainfall. Meanwhile, experts are also attributing the improvement in pollution levels to strong winds and rain dispersing pollutants. And finally, the fight for the Wrestling Federation will go right down to the wire. Former Commonwealth Games gold medalist, wrestler Anita Shuran, who is one of the witnesses in the sexual harassment case against BJP MP and the former WFI president, Bridgebhushan Sharan Singh, has filed her nomination to succeed the BJP strongman. Anita, the 2010 New Delhi Commonwealth Games gold medalist, filed her candidature on Monday, the last day for filing nominations for the August 12th election to the Wrestling Federation of India. In case she wins, she will be the first woman to head an ancient India sport whose roots can be traced to all male akharas. Even for this watershed WFI elections, Anita is the lone woman in the 50-member voters and candidates list. The 38-year-old is likely to be up against two form. Uh, two from Bridge Bhushan's panel, Olympian Jay Prakash, the president of the Delhi Wrestling Association, and Sanjay Singh Bhola of Uttar Pradesh.